Hi and welcome to chapter 4 of Design Fundamentals. In the previous video, you had basically witnessed how isometric drawing could be used as a tool to be able to develop something into 3D. Today, what we are going to do is delve a little deeper into that, break down the process and make it easier for us to understand how we can turn an object into 3D. Before we do that, let's ask ourselves some basic questions. When you draw objects, how can they be better represented? The answer is very simple, by drawing out all sides of the frame. Now let's try doing that. Let's take any object that we have and place it in the middle of a cube, like this one. Now every cube has six faces. You have the front, the back, the left, the right, the top and the bottom. Now when you see this object in relation to each of these faces, whether you see it from the front, when you see it from the right, from the top, the bottom, what angle and what aspect of the object is visible to you changes. And when that happens, what you need to do is be able to draw the object out from each of these six sides. Now let's take an example of this beaker itself. This beaker from the front shows its full form. But from one side, all you see is a tumbler. From the other side, that is from the back, you see its mirror image. From the top, you see a circle with a lip and from the bottom, you only see a circle. So you can understand that not each two-dimensional flat face always carries the complete information. When you have all six faces and you put them together, it is possible to project a 3D version that can be turned into an isometric drawing out of it. Let's give it a shot. Take a look at this. This is an L-shaped object that we have. From the top, it looks like a bed. From the front, it just looks like two rectangles. But from the left, it looks like an L. Now put together, all three of them help you convey accurate information. But on their own, they are not complete. This is called orthographic projection, which is basically representing 3D objects such that Across their faces, across each of these three to six faces, their basic dimensions and flat versions are visible. Now, how do we use both orthographic and isometric methods? Let's take a look. Right now, over here, I have a isometric grid. Now, what I'm going to do is draw something simple like a cup. Now, let's try the orthographic version first. Now my cup is something first. This is my rough work. From the top, my cup is circular. Now that obviously has a certain amount of depth. This cup has a handle. Okay, now if I were to project this and this is the center. It has a semicircular base. Now, the handle starts at the very top and it comes down this way. 
Now, if I want to add more detail, I can give it a thickness like this, which is similar to the thickness shown in the cup. Now, if I want to show another view, which is this view, I would do And now I would just add the handle at the center since it goes all the way till here. Now you notice that the handle has a curve at this point. So I just indicate that depth with some shading. Now this is the left view. This is my orthographic projection of the same cup. Now, how do I draw it in isometry? Now, what I'm going to do is look at these proportions. And I'm going to try and replicate it here in isometry. And because this is isometric, I'm going to place the handle here. Now let's erase all the unnecessary lines. This is a cup in 3D now. You can add some details. Or you can even emphasize on what is hidden using a series of dotted lines. To be able to see clearly, I'm going to turn off the grid. That is an isometric view. As you can see, in order to get through each of these methods, you have to see that you can see the top view of the object, one side view, another side view, two views which are most explanatory and then put together an isometric version that actually completes the view. Now this is basically how objects can also be detailed out. You start with a cube and the next thing you do is you draw the basic shapes of the cube after which you lightly add elements and remove elements that are not necessary to the whole, followed by outlining the final product in a darker pencil. This way, the isometric and the orthographic can come together to actually help you detail out your design in an accurate manner. 
So now how does the same knowledge go for spaces, maps and directions? It's very simple. You have a cube or a space. Now, whenever you have a plan, it basically gives you a flat layout. But you can use the isometric to raise walls, to raise ceilings and to raise individual furniture items or components that are part of spaces. Now, if you want to visualize even how an architecture of a house looks like, it is possible to break it into a plan, a top view, and a series of elevations. Elevations being your front, back, side, and right side and left side views that will help you get a complete picture of the entire object. Now, here's one thing that you all can try at home. Try drawing a single cube and exploding it such that all of the six spaces are seen very clearly. How will you draw it? 